When we talked about the general reactivity of carbonyl groups, one thing we remarked is that nucleophilic addition to the carbonyl carbon is one of the most important elementary steps of carbonyl compounds. And I just want to reiterate that again, that really nucleophilic addition to a carbonyl group is one of the most important things to look for when you're considering how a carbonyl compound will react under a variety of conditions. It's something that can happen really even when you don't want it to, and so it's always worth thinking about as a possible mode of reactivity. We're going to start looking at nucleophilic additions to carbonyl groups in detail in this lesson. And so I wanted to briefly revisit this addition to a polarized pi bond elementary step by a nucleophile. The mechanistic idea here is that the nucleophile donates a pair of electrons to the electrophilic atom within a polarized pi bond. And in the CO double bond, that's always the carbonyl carbon. If the nucleophile is anionic, this often leads to an alkoxide or alkoxide derivative with a negative charge on oxygen. We also see protonated carbonyl groups engaging in this kind of reactivity with neutral nucleophiles. Our focus in this first of two video series on nucleophilic additions to ketohydes in particular is on heteroatomic nucleophiles. And here I'm referring to things like water, where the oxygen serves as a nucleophile, alcohols, which of course are highly analogous. It's just we now have an R group where we had a hydrogen in water, amines, and these may have a hydrogen or not, primary, secondary, or tertiary amines. We'll look at the differences between those. And although we won't look at these directly, things like H2S, dihydrogen sulfide, and thiols can also engage in these kinds of nucleophilic addition processes. We'll also look at additions of the conjugate bases of these, which are obviously much better nucleophiles than the neutral forms. In the next video series, we'll look at strong carbon-based nucleophiles, so things that are pretty much pure carbanions, CR3-, or organometallic compounds with a strong, very high negative charge on carbon. I wanted to start by giving an overview of this unit and the heteroatomic nucleophiles we'll look at. When alcohols engage with carbonyl compounds, we get addition of the alcohol across the carbonyl group with the hydrogen headed to oxygen and the nucleophilic oxygen, of course, linked to the carbonyl carbon. This amounts to an addition process. And the intermediate that you see at the center of this slide undergoes further reactivity. The OH group that we see in this intermediate is substituted by the alcohol to place a second alkoxy group linked to the former carbonyl carbon. And this process is a substitution. So we'll look at those two a little bit separately, but talk about hemiacetals, the middle structure, and acetals, over the next few videos. When water does this kind of reactivity, of course, only addition is possible, but the reaction is highly analogous to the behavior of alcohols. It's just that we've added a hydroxyl group. The nucleophilic oxygen is linked to H rather than R, and we've added a hydrogen to the carbonyl oxygen in this process, and so it's definitely addition. And in both of these, and really everything on this slide, nucleophilic addition, or AD sub N, is the key elementary step. But additional things can happen. So this substitution process, for example, involves a beta elimination after the nucleophilic addition. And the same is true of these reactions of amines. If we look at what's going on here, when we treat, for example, a ketone or aldehyde with a primary amine, notice this is a primary amine with one R group, we end up with something that looks like a substitution. It's a substitution in the sense that the carbonyl oxygen has been replaced with a nitrogen. There's still a carbon heteroatom double bond in the product, but now nitrogen is doubly bound to carbon instead of oxygen. So it's a net substitution process. When a secondary amine is used in this context, we end up with a slightly different substrate. It's actually an isomer in some sense of the substrate when a primary amine is used, but it contains a carbon-carbon double bond instead of a carbon-nitrogen double bond. And still this remains a net substitution process. The first substrate, when a primary amine is used, is called an imine, and the second is an enamine. And we'll look at the formations of these products in detail in this video series, and we'll look at the reactivity of imines and enamines in detail in a later video series. Now, all of these reactions involving heteroatomic nucleophiles engaging with a carbonyl compound, ketone or aldehyde specifically, have very important applications. And so, for example, the formation of acetals is a vital strategy in organic synthesis protecting a carbonyl group from further nucleophilic addition. We find 
for example, the hemiacetal in carbohydrates. We find hemiacetals, amines, and enamines in Maillard reactions involved in cooking. Vitamin B6, an important cofactor that involves a heteroatomic nucleophile engaging with the carbonyl group. And in things like the biosynthesis of aromatic heterocycles, where setting up an imine or enamine is a precursor to the formation of a ring. This is just the tip of the iceberg of applications of these nucleophilic additions. It's really a key class of reactions for ketones and aldehydes.